When a fan recently asked on Twitter, WWE agent Road Dog, why it was a good idea to have Kevin Owens lose to Dolph Ziggler, considering the circumstance and situation that the company finds itself in right now, although it was very interesting that Road Dog responded by basically asserting that wins and losses don't count and that character is what matters and Kevin Owens has it. And then when asked for clarification, was that actually what he really meant? Road Dog was like, yes, that's what he really meant. And guess that him and the fan just had a difference of opinion, but it was all good. Now, I like the fact that Road Dog didn't look down on that fan for stating a viewpoint. I like how he wasn't really condescending. You know, I respect that. And I'll be fair to Road Dog here in the interest of full fairness. I get what he was saying in this sense is that from a kayfabe out of kayfabe standpoint, wrestling is scripted, it's predetermined, it's fake, it's not real, whatever you want to call it. It's planned out, choreographed, all that. So the wins and losses aren't the same as wins and losses would be, let's say, in boxing or MMA or in the NFL or the NBA. Yeah, I get that. I also get and understand what he's saying, too, about characters matter. Because characters do matter in the sports entertainment genre. You know, guys have to be interesting, compelling characters. There are different ways to go about that. There are different ways to be interesting and compelling. But no matter how much you win or lose, you know, if your character stinks, you're not going to get over with the audience the right way or get over with them at all in any way, period. So he's right about that. You know, characters do matter and personalities do matter. And just because a guy wins all the time, it doesn't mean that he's going to be over and over in the right way. See Roman Reigns, see John Cena. But at the same point in time, it doesn't mean that a guy that loses all the time has no ability to get over whatsoever. You know, sometimes those guys that lose all the time can end up getting over in a big way. So I get what he was saying. It was just really, really troubling to me. Because you're looking at somebody, an agent behind the scenes in WWE, and somebody that has a lot of creative influence and creative voice, saying something like this. Either A, he's out of touch, or B, he doesn't have a clue. And either way, that should really concern us. Either he's out of touch from the standpoint of he doesn't understand what the fan was trying to get at, and he doesn't understand what the fan meant, or he has no clue what the fan meant, and he has no clue about what is really going on. And that's concerning, because again, you've got a major creative mind, you know, one of God's chosen apostles behind the scenes. And he's basically sitting there and telling you wins and losses don't count. You know, it's just, it's about characters. But at the same point in time, how can you really say that looking at today's product when so much of what you see every week on Raw is all lame-ass repetitive in-ring action? There aren't stories there. There aren't interesting, compelling characters that are getting a chance to break out that are telling interesting and compelling stories in new and unique ways. You're going to tell me then that wins and losses don't count? I mean, that, that's incredibly troubling. And that should give us a reason for pause and make us wonder, whoa, 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 whoa. Somebody this high up on the totem pole in WWE is thinking like this. No wonder the product stinks the way it does. And here's my thing. And the whole thing about wins and losses and their importance and whether or not they count. You know, again, I understand it's not MMA, it's not boxing, it's not the NFL, it's not the NBA. So wins and losses are different. But to sit there and say that they don't count when you say it like that leaves that avenue for interpretation that they're not important, that they don't have meaning, or they don't have significance. And that is just complete and total, respectfully, Road Dog, that is complete and total idiotic bullshit. It truly is. Because if wins and losses don't count, regardless of the perspective of which you want to look at it, then why would we even have matches? Why does anybody wrestle for anything? Why do we have world titles, IC titles, US titles, tag titles, Divas titles? Why do you have any of those belts if wins and losses don't matter? If wins and losses don't matter, then why do we even bother having matches? Therefore, as a result, why do we even bother having storylines? You know, the few that you actually get. And furthermore, if there's no reason to have matches because the wins and losses don't count, and there's no reason to have the story, then why even have the show at all? I mean, does that make sense? Do you start to understand how stupid and ridiculous that sounds? And furthermore, 
if we're looking at this from a kayfabe standpoint, from a kayfabe standpoint, and even in not a kayfabe standpoint, it's a similar type of deal here. Why do new talents typically get pushed via a series of wins? If the wins and losses don't count and they don't matter, then why do we always have to sit there and say, hey, this guy's debuting, so we're going to spotlight him by having him win, and then we're going to have him win again, and we're going to have him win again. And then when you really want to rocket ship a guy, you consistently have him win, and you increase his level of competition and the quality of his wins, giving him, including, hopefully, if you're doing it right, signature victories at big four pay-per-views. If the wins and losses don't matter, if the wins and losses don't count, then why would you fucking do that? And you could clearly see over the years the philosophy of the WWE, and as it should be, they have certain guys that they believe in and get behind. They're going to push in a certain way. Certain guys that they don't, they don't. But the guys that they don't, that the wins and losses don't count and the wins and losses don't matter, then why is it when somebody pisses somebody off backstage or somebody doesn't like one of the wrestlers behind the scenes, do those guys get buried via losing repeatedly and being made to look like fools in matches? Why? The guys that are in the doghouse, the guys that get lost in the shuffle, if the wins and losses don't matter, then why aren't more of those guys over like a million bucks even though they're losing all the fucking time? It just makes absolutely no sense. And the whole thing for somebody like a road dog, this is where you start getting sucked into the vortex of the WWE bubble. And this can be a very dangerous place. Because you're going to tell me and have the nerve to try and tell me and others that it's about characters. Well, if it's about characters, then why isn't Kevin Owens, frankly, more over and more entertaining than he actually is? Why isn't Bray Wyatt, a truly unique character for the WWE now, more entertaining and more over than he actually is? Why don't these guys have more momentum? Why don't more fans take them more seriously? It's in part because of the fact that Kevin Owens never really establishes any significant momentum because he loses too goddamn much. And then you look, especially in the case of a Bray Wyatt, what's the point of a Bray Wyatt doing anything? Why would anybody really care that much about what he does? Because at the end of the day, every big match and every big feud he's basically in, he ultimately comes up on the short end of the stick, and that's with help. Can we start to see how ridiculous this is? And furthermore, the whole notion of wins and losses don't count. You know, this is, again, where we get into the separation between a fantasy and reality, and we start to see where the WWE really struggles with their identity and who they are and who they want to be and what they want their product to be going forward. Because if wins and losses didn't count, why do we talk about wins and losses so much? The fucking Undertaker, he had an undefeated streak, 21-0. It was over two decades worth of never losing at WrestleMania. There were years where that was the number one story, the number one building block for your WrestleMania show. If the wins and losses don't count, then why the hell did we ever mention it? Why the hell did that ever become a marketing tool? And why the hell did anybody give a shit when Brock Lesnar beat him at WrestleMania 30? If wins and losses don't matter, and they don't count, then why the fuck when he's on TV and when he's at pay-per-views does John Cena win so goddamn much? If his character is truly so great, and it's all about characters, then why does it matter if he wins or he fucking loses? And why does he have to win 99% of the goddamn time? And why can hardly every, anybody ever, ever, ever beat him 100% clean? You know, how ridiculous is that? How ridiculous? It's not just ridiculous from the standpoint of seeing him winning too goddamn much and nobody being a viable threat to him. Furthermore, it's the problem of the fact that he wins all the goddamn time. He wins all of the goddamn time. So you can't sit there and tell me on the one hand that wins and losses don't count, but you'll be the same type of asshole world dog that'll sit there and justify John Cena winning all the damn time. Trying to sit there and talk about how to tell some great story and he doesn't tell shit. And it doesn't make the character any more compelling. In fact, it makes it even less compelling. If wins and losses didn't count, though, why would you have had Daniel Bryan win at WrestleMania 30? And just imagine how terrible that ultimately would have been if you would have had Daniel Bryan win, not win at WrestleMania 30, and I would go even further, let's say it's all the point about getting there, it's all about the character, it's all about the story, and you wanted to drag it out, then fucking just have Triple H beat him in the opening match at WrestleMania 30 and see how the fuck that goes. And then even look at the 2015 Royal Rumble. You know, right or wrong, there were fans that were pissed, that were ticked that Daniel Bryan didn't win the goddamn Royal Rumble. They were ticked because he didn't win. They weren't happy because he was there, and they were happy because they love his character, and they love Daniel Bryan as a performer. They were pissed off because the guy didn't win the fucking Rumble. 
You had people canceling network subscriptions. You had people threatening to boycott. People creating all types of Twitter firestorms and trends and hashtags and shit. Because the guy didn't win, so don't tell me wins and losses don't count. Doesn't matter whether your perspective is in the real world or in kayfabe. It doesn't fucking matter. It does matter. From a kayfabe standpoint, if wins and losses don't count, then why the hell would we have or have number one contenders matches? Why not just grade them off of how good their character is and how much effort they put forth? That makes them the number one contender because, again, the wins and losses don't count. Do you understand how stupid and ridiculous that sounds? If wins and losses didn't count, then why do we know of so many instances over the years of backstage politics about this guy not wanting to put that guy over, this guy not wanting to work with that guy, that guy not wanting to lose to this guy, this guy, if he did lose to him this time, he wants to get it back on the back end at the end of the day so that way he could go over. What would be the need for backstage politics? And you can't tell me Road Dog doesn't know about backstage politics. He's hung around Hunter for years. And believe me, when you talk about the Mount Rushmore of wrestling politics, God finds his face on that fucking mountain. I assure you. I assure you. If wins and losses didn't count, then why didn't the Summer of Punk in 2011 work better than it actually did? You bring CM Punk back way too early. Makes no storyline sense whatsoever. You take the guy from having all the logic in the world and all the leverage in the world to absolutely having no logic and no fucking leverage because apparently you wanted to make him look like a dumbass and then you decide to have him lose the belt at SummerSlam, lose to God at Night of Champions, lose again in a tag match. You sapped all of his momentum, so you can't tell me wins and losses don't count when you could clearly see in 2011 that having CM Punk lose at the wrong time multiple pay-per-views in a row was devastating to him and his character and his ability to become that kind of transcendent next-generation top talent. It truly was. And you don't want to believe me there. How about the Nexus in 2010? People were talking about him. People were buzzing about him. There was a buzz there. There was an interest level that came associated with them. And all of a sudden, we get to fucking SummerSlam 2010, and it's got to be about John Cena reigning supreme. Because, again, wins and losses don't count. So why the fuck was John Cena so insistent? He had to win here, and he had to do it this way. Now, what happened to the Nexus after that? Exactly. If wins and losses didn't count, then why the hell did Goldberg ever get over with this big undefeated streak that lasted the year plus? If wins and losses didn't matter, why did you try to package Ryback in 2012 as a Goldberg type of guy emphasizing his own type of winning streak? If wins and losses didn't matter and it was about characters and about stories, then why did Triple H even need to get into the Royal Rumble, let alone win the goddamn Rumble? Furthermore, why even have the Royal Rumble at all? And we come down to the fundamental thing. If wins and losses don't count in professional wrestling, why even have the matches? If you don't need to have the matches, then you don't need to have the characters. You don't need to have the stories. There's no point in having a fucking show at all. Look, I understand at the end of the day, wrestling is scripted. And wins and losses aren't everything. That is true. I'll give them that. I agree with that. Because you'll have guys that, like Chris Jericho that lose a lot, but they're still over big. Guys like Mick Foley throughout their career lost a lot, but they were still over big. But we're also talking about established guys like Mick Foley and Chris Jericho that at the right times at different points in their careers, they won and they won the big matches that they fucking needed to. That's an entirely different thing. You can't sit there and tell me it's all about character with Kevin Owens. That type of shit applies to somebody like a Chris Jericho or a Mick Foley, multiple time world champions, you know, big, huge names, actually money drawing guys. So they get to the point, Ric Flair, during a certain stretch of his career, it didn't hurt him to lose a lot to a certain degree because he was still Ric Flair. He had that legacy. He had that resume behind him. Kevin Owens does not have that. Bray Wyatt does not have that. They aren't the everything and be all end all. I'll agree. It's about characters. It's about stories. But those characters and those stories ultimately come down to wins and losses. And yes, those wins and losses do count. And the WWE's own history shows that. Because those wins and losses can be about momentum. And they can be about giving the right blow off to a story. They can be about setting up new stories and new angles. Wins and losses are important as anything that you damn have. It's not everything and it's not the only thing. But it's a damn important thing. And it's just astounding me that somebody like Road Dog, when a fan poses a really serious, legitimate question that, frankly, there isn't a good answer for from the WWE, in my opinion, responds with this crap. Wins and losses don't count. 
If anything, Road Dog just validated what I've said for the past few years about this product, is that it's ultimately one giant waste of time. So why bother watching?